Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Wake Up Legendary. It's Wednesday, November 16th. I have just outside of this door a dog losing her mind. Uh, I'm not sure what she's losing her mind at, but please forgive me. It's a beauty. Oh, she ran out the dog door. All right, we're good. All right. Uh, we go live for those of you who don't know every single Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So 10 a.m. Eastern on our Facebook page, we go live and, uh, bring you another story, another person, uh, who's taken our training or takes, uh, one of the core four business models that we teach and has built a successful business and they're crushing it. We just want to share their story as a way to share some inspiration. <clears throat> I say often that you can wake up. Uh, to CNN, cable news, uh, Fox News, whatever. Uh, you can wake up to all the intense nonsense and kind of BS that's going on in the world. Or you can wake up um, and start your day with something like Wake Up Legendary uh, and hear from people just like you who are pushing through um, all, the, all the initial sort of hurdles and jumping over all those initial hurdles of getting a business started. So <clears throat> if you're tuned in live with us, let us know in the chat where you're tuning in from and uh, l help me also welcome on our guest for today, uh, Tom from Colorado. What's up, Tom? Hi, nice to meet you. Good to have you on. Um, tell us a little bit about how you found Legendary and uh, tell us a little bit about uh, I'm actually curious about just, you know, experience with Beachbody back in the day, because sometimes it's interesting to get people's like backstories and history. But uh, tell us a little bit about you and tell us how you found Legendary. All right. Sure. Uh, thanks for having me on here. Um, I wanted to say kind of start back in the late 90s when I was dating my wife at the time. We actually got into the MLM world. Cool. And there was a initial company that came out with health products, supplements, and water filters. That was the big thing. So we decided to jump in there and try that out. We loved the experience of, it wasn't an in-home thing, but they actually did it in an office building. Mm -hmm. Big office setting, hundreds of people, and the energy was crazy. So we, we kind of caught on to that real quick. And we did that for a few months and found out it was really hard to kind of get other people to come to those events as well. Sure. To step away from their families and come to those events for one or two hours, several days a week. So they were kind of stepped out of that for a while and went back to normal nine to five life. Yep. So that was back in the nineties. Holy smokes. Okay, cool. I was just, uh, I was just a wee little thing. Um, so you, so you started there and a lot of our, I would say a lot of our audience, um, has some form of a background in MLM. I mean, I first found it, I think it's just an, it's sort of an easy approachable way to make money on the side or something. You know, it's like for a lot of people, they're just desiring a little extra income. They're desiring a little bit more out of life. I think like whether that's losing weight or supplements or, um, even just making more money. Um, and then, yeah, I, it's sort of like a, <laughs> it's not like a rite of passage, but kind of like a rite of passage a little bit um, into sort of discovering, you know, for me, I found the four hour work week and uh, that was powerful and uh, learned how to use the Internet. And so um, so talk to us a little bit about, you know, your work and then and and what between, you know, maybe your wife and you or, or maybe just you, what um yeah, what's what? What was the driving factor to come online and start an online business? A couple of things on there. Um, we had our first daughter, and that's when Beachbody came in to affect. So, wife wanted to stay home as a stay-at-home mom, so I needed to find some other sort of income, and didn't really want to work a second job and log in for somebody else for another four to six hours a day. It didn't sound very fun, so we did the Beachbody thing for a while. Um, had amazing results for myself, which inspired a lot of people, but it's really hard to get other people to work out to <laughs> stay on track. So I, even though you know, I lost 40 pounds, I went from this to this, and had muscles and everything, and just the abs and everything, but it's just real hard to get somebody else to, to put in that amount of effort for themselves too. 
So yeah, we're uh, we had our second daughter, and recently we moved to Delaware two years ago to be with some family. While we we're out there, that's when the whole COVID thing was going on. And my oldest daughter, she loves dogs, loves dogs to death. She decided to start making an Instagram page to have the dogs be influencers. And while doing that, she got hit up by several affiliate marketing companies saying, hey, would you show our products with your dogs and we'll give you a commission? So they started building on that. And then a couple of months later, I started getting into that same thing and then I found, I found, found legendary. Cool. Super cool. Um, hey, is your phone on some sort of a stand? Yeah. Is it is the bottom of the stand kind of hitting the speaker or the microphone? It just got yeah, a like, moved it up. Hmm. Okay. I think it's okay. I was just getting some feedback in the chat that it's a little bit hard to hear. Okay. You to talk up more. Uh, maybe it just sounds like there's something muffling it a little bit, but I'm not really clear on what that is. So, um, so tell us a little bit about when you started with Legendary and you dive into Legendary, you start the 15 day challenge. I'm curious, like throughout all of that, had you ever, have you ever started anything online? Like, had you ever started a training or, um, anything to like, you know, help you figure out lead generation or anything like that? No, everything was brand new to me. I first saw it in January of this year and I watched, I watched about six people for five months. Wow. You know, just, I just, just walking around. around. Yeah. And I, I, I kept watching them daily doing the same videos. And then I decided to email them all and message them all different questions. You know, I'll much answer the same way, a little bit different, <laughs> but, kind of just I kind of trusted one more than the other and then decided to get started. Wow. We had to move back to Colorado and my expenses were going to be like another $1,200 a month to move back there. So I needed to find something else I could do. So I got started, I think the beginning of July. Okay. And towards the end of July, the guys were doing, I think it was Joshua that was doing the, uh, the Facebook the five day Facebook challenge. So that was when I first put my videos on towards the end of July. So I've really only been in it for three months. Everything was brand new to me, all the yeah. training. But going through the training, it really opened my eyes on man, there's so many more things I could do out there and it it's gonna help me build that business for my daughters for their dog their dog influencers. Again expand on that for them so they can actually make a lot more money and do a lot more things. So I have a lot of ideas going on. And I think the training is very, very <laughs> worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, you've you've really, you know, having started back in July and got it started, I mean, it takes a little bit of time. Right? It takes a couple months to get the feel for it. It takes a couple months of just believing that you know somebody's gonna watch the videos <laughs> you know you start <laughs> posting videos and you're like kind of looking around like uh is anybody out there <laughs> um earth the tiktok <laughs> and then you know i think you started to really take off in september and uh things have really taken off for you um walk us through the starting of the the content creation because i'm curious how you were able to go from sort of no content creation to now you're a content creator. Yeah, I had a little bit of content creation from my daughters while they were doing the videos of the dogs and messing with those. So I just kind of watched them and they showed me how to do their videos. So Super from smart. Over here, it was just putting myself out there and wanting to actually put myself on the video. Yeah. After you get the first two or three, it's like, what was I afraid of? Yeah, interesting. Some people are going to like it. Some people are going to scroll by it. But you might just inspire one person that, and it totally changes their life and their, their look on in the future. Yeah, totally. And I think that um, I think that with uh, with with creating content, you talked about kind of tapping into an existing resource that you have, which is your daughter. 
um, and uh, and creating videos and sort of watching and looking in and looking and that's just being resourceful. It's taking a look at what resources do I have around me. How do I leverage that? And everybody's got some form of resources. There's some story. I mean, even if people are homeless, even, you know, there's some sort of story behind that. I see, I see people on TikTok who are um, homeless or have some sort of um, disability and, and their accounts are massive and they have funds or certain things that they've got um, that you know, there's always some form of a story. There's always something. And a lot of people just don't tell it because they're nervous or they're worried what people are going to think or say or whatever. Um, what do you, what, when you first got started with content creation, what did you uh, find to be the most uh, easy and then also the most difficult? Well, most difficult was just videotaping yourself. That was the most difficult and wanted to hit that post button. Super awkward, right? <laughs> yeah, super awkward. I, I, I videotaped myself doing workouts before for people, but that was just for 10, 20, 30 people, not for billions of people to see. So that's kind of that's kind of nerve-wracking. I think that, that five-day Facebook Reel Challenge really helped me out because we had a big group of people. Um, Joshua was giving a lot of tips and tricks on what we should do, and everybody posted posted videos, and everybody supported each other. And that I think that really made it a whole lot easier for me. Yeah, totally. I think that um, I have a lot of people uh, that we've interviewed on this show in different places where they uh, they come on and they say exactly what you just said, which is I got started in some sort of a TikTok challenge or a Facebook Reels challenge or some you know some sort of a challenge. And uh, I think that that's so interesting because there's something about you know, and I know. Um, I don't know if Beachbody does them, but like different different MLMs, they'll always be doing challenges. And it's a way to kind of stir up the energy and get the and get people like, oh, man, I, got, I can't miss out on the challenge. You know, like it's it's a challenge. I can't say no to a challenge. I interviewed a lady like a couple weeks ago and she was like, you know, it was really just the word challenge. As soon as I heard the word challenge, I was like, well. You know, if you're going to challenge me to something, I'm not going to I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to not finish it or something. Right. And so um, I, I think that, you know, getting into some form of a challenge or participating in some form of a communal accountability, I think, is like kind of the key word there is accountability. And when you were doing Beachbody, I'm guessing you probably had days or moments where uh you know, the big piece of you said get it was hard to get people to work out. A big piece of that is just accountability. Sometimes people just hate accountability because it hurts and it sucks. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Yeah. What people, I mean, from July. Yeah, go ahead. Everybody has a different I guess, point of view of it and everybody has different results. So some people just don't think I'm not going to be able to get the same results as you. So I'm not even going to try. But that's oh. the key thing. You don't know if you don't try. And you can totally change your life. And that's, that's, that's why I'm here. I, I want to actually help people. And I've, I've been through customer service jobs, financial jobs, sales jobs. So I kind of have, I, I love helping people and like seeing people succeed. And that, that kind of gives me more pleasure but more excitement that somebody else had mm -hmm. from something I could have shared with them. Oh, that's such a good point. Uh I feel like a lot of times people I just I notice like kind of your the way that you look at things is sort of through an optimistic lens, which I feel like is um really important and valuable. But what I mean by that is like a lot of times people would work a lot of different jobs. And I know for me like I had a lot a lot of time where I would be working jobs and or I'd switch jobs or something and I'd feel like I was, you know, I the thing that kept coming up was 
you know, oh, he can't hold a job or something. And I, I didn't jump around that much to jobs. And I was in my 20s. So, I mean, for goodness sakes, who cares? But to me, I was like, oh, yeah, I can't hold a job, you know, whatever. Like, I'm kind of a loser. It's going to look bad on my resume. And it's just it is funny how you're just like, no, I've got these different experiences that now have sort of led me to this place where I can now relate to a lot of different people from different backgrounds, from different works of life. And um and all of that stuff sort of compiles into your ability to connect to people. And I would say that's one of the biggest things about, you know, going online and going on social media is just how are, how is your ability to uh, set aside, you know, your wants, your desires, your, you know, how important we think we are and sort of just open ourselves to connecting with somebody and and sharing a little bit about how we might be able to help them or we might have something cool to share with them or something like that um man i think that that's really cool and really important um for people to realize that oftentimes what we might see and i, I don't even think you s implied or said that this is a weakness but for me i was like wow my weaknesses are oftentimes my strengths which is um which is just a different lens. It's like putting different glasses on, like different glasses and seeing the world through a different realm um, that's filled with a bit more self-esteem and a bit more confidence, you know? Um, as you're creating content, tell us what, you know, in those first three months, there's not a lot of traffic coming. There's not a lot of uh, leads coming. There's not a lot of sales coming yet. But in those first few months, as you're just building your infrastructure, you're kind of building and setting things up and figuring it out. What was important to you um, as you were getting started? What, what, uh, how were you creating content and coming up with ideas in those early days, right when you got started? Because we got a lot of people here who are just getting started. Yeah, the the guy I got started with that was uh, Christian, Christian Focus. He's been on here a couple of times. He, we became friends, so he. I, became, I, yeah, I saw him in the comments. I think he's watching. <laughs> Hi there. But he's he reaches out to me and sees how things are going. He's giving me a lot of tips. He watches my my content and tells me what to do, what not to do. You should try this. But I've taken a lot of his advice and have gone out and done those things. And it's actually so far it's paid off. Uh, I think. Uh, all the platforms are a little bit different, so I use the CapCut app. I build all my videos on the CapCut app, and then I post them on each individual platform and just add the song from each individual platform so there's none of that copyright stuff to come back to you. Yeah, that's super smart and a great way to... Uh, it's a super smart way to be able to repurpose all your content all over different places too. That's really powerful as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Are you also sort of, so TikTok, maybe Facebook, Instagram, other, other places that you're posting videos to? I started on YouTube. I got to figure that out a little bit more, but mainly just those three platforms. Yeah. Well, those are three good ones to get going on. That's for sure. The, um, we, yeah, I've seen a lot of new traction from YouTube Shorts recently, and I think that that's an underrated one right now. But you know, sometimes it's it's random. Sometimes it's just hit and miss. You get you get an occasional ten thousand views on YouTube, and then over here on TikTok on a totally different video, you've got a different uh, you got a different video that goes viral, and it's sort of like you know building out this we call it omnipresence but this this sort of i'm present at, on all these different platforms and you sneak five leads here and two leads here and one lead here and it all adds up to be a big lead generation machine this content machine um that's very different and i'm sure you can relate with this but it's very different than lead generation in 2011 <laughs> it's like a we're playing a totally different game now Oh, yeah. And even back in 99, we had to do everything to the newspaper and put ads in the newspaper. And same thing, talk to your friends, call your friends and make a list of all of your friends and call them one by one to see who you can get involved. Dude. And hundreds of millions of people and just take one video to go viral. 
that changes everything for you. And that's kind of what happened to me. Wow. Yeah. And I think that that's I, even in 2010, I was posting, believe this or not, I was posting Craigslist ads uh, and they were basically newspaper ads. I mean, it was written and formatted just like a newspaper ad. And, you know, it had a phone number to call. And uh, I mean, geez, it was crazy. It was crazy. But um, so, so, you know, and then I learned search engine optimization and I started writing blogs. And rather than me trying to put my stuff out in front of people, I instead, you know, became the hunted instead of the hunter. And people would type in how to, you know, whatever. And my blog post would come up. So now they're already looking for what I've got. And now it's just a matter of, you know, that's the idea behind freelance digital marketing is uh, selling things that people are already have a desire for, are already looking for. And you just have to, you know, basically just say, hey, let me just steer you over here. And I'm not the expert. I'm not the course creator. I'm not, I don't handle the merchant accounts. I don't handle the support. I don't do any of that. But let me just steer you over here and you can take a little piece of that pie, which is kind of a cool business model, honestly. Um, what uh, at, here's what I am curious about. So as you start to get the wheels start turning a little and you start to generate some leads from all these videos you're making, what's been your secret to generating uh, conversions or, you know, say it another way? Um uh, turning people into buyers as opposed to just kind of looky loos um, because it seems like you convert a lot of customers and I'm curious, you know, how you do that. If you have any secrets. Yeah, certainly. Um, when I first started, anytime someone reached out, I always put on the videos, like follow, share and comment this keyword. So I can reach back out to you. As soon as someone commented, I would DM them back and I would ask them, you know, what caught your interest? I'd wait for them to respond. I would respond appropriately and then I would ask what their goals are, what kind of struggles they're going through right now. So I'd kind of get an idea of how I'm going to help them and get whatever angle I need to be able to help them in their situation. And that got to a point where that, that was working for a while and then I had the one video that went viral. I think it has like 3 million views on it now and 40,000 comments. I got so many, so many DMs every day, 100 plus likes, 100 plus followers, 100 plus DMs. I couldn't keep up with everybody. So I just, I ended up making one big message and sending it to everybody and just telling them, if you have questions, reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer them. But I, I couldn't help 300 people a day. So I just had to find an angle that I could to help anybody and send them all the information all at once. Wow. And I wanted to just point out to everybody who's here, I, I thought we kind of, you, you said something that I felt was really important and we kind of moved past it, but I wanted to just emphasize that, um, has everybody noticed how Tom just said, you know, when I start talking to somebody, I ask them a question. And that's a really important thing that a lot of people miss is asking people questions, getting them to say, showing that you're interested in them rather than just saying, Hey, look, I, you know, go to the link, go to this link and, and buy my shit. You know, uh, the first thing is he asked a question. He says, what caught your interest? And wow, what a powerful question, because that's it's called an open ended question, basically a question that could allow people to go lots of different directions rather than asking them a yes or no question, which is, you know, it that kind that's just a basic conversational skill. But um, that a yes or no question sort of forces you into this interrogation and an open ended question will allow you to sort of explore it's way less interrogation and more just like what caught you know people go a million different directions with that and then even diving into things like what's your goals why are you interested and those kind of things open up the ability for you to to not only connect with somebody connection you don't have to have any special social skills you just have to be able to ask some questions and show interest and um you know 
I think that there's this, uh, I can't remember what this book is called, but it's, I think it's how to win friends and influence people. And, you know, it's basically just all about that. I mean, it's all just about showing in real interest in people and that's the hard wiring. That's the DNA of people. It's also though, not just a manipulative sales tactic, right? It's, it, it, that comes across, like I'm saying, you know, it's, it's just this way to get somebody to buy something. It sounds like you're being manipulative. Now, the truth is, is that, you know, people are looking actively to buy stuff online on social media, but they're also mostly looking for a connection. Like at the deepest kind of core human need, is there's some form of connection, right? And so if you if you have the ability to connect with people and the ability to to explore, for instance, somebody's goals with them, even if they don't buy something from you. Like if I'm in the weight loss niche and I'm exploring somebody's weight loss goals with them, and you know, I ask them a question and I say, you know, why do you think it's been so hard to lose that weight? What what would you point to, or what are some signals of why it's been so hard? You know, even if somebody never buys from me, but I ask that question, a lot of times they're gonna think about that question for weeks and months and maybe even years and they're gonna not be haunted by it but just kind of wonder like wow i hadn't really thought of that before that was that was a that was a meaningful question and you know that kind of connection can really change people and it gives you the opportunity to to help people grow help people change regardless of financial outcome and if you do it right and you do it well and you build goodwill um, you might actually be able to help them make a powerful buying decision. And a lot of times when people buy something, it's when they commit to something. And when they commit to something, you know, usually they'll see some form of change or at least a step in the right direction. And it just so happens that in our world and how we're built as humans, that comes in the form of money. And um, they usually pay for something. And that's a meaningful transaction where, you know, I go to therapy and I pay a lot of money for my therapy sessions and damn it I show up on time to those things because they cost me money and I show up and I'm ready and I'm prepared and I'm focused and I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna do anything else that whole hour that the 30 minutes before and the 30 minutes after because this cost me a lot of freaking money and so if I'm gonna grow and I'm gonna change that's how it's gonna happen and so I think that um I was just really uh I don't know. I was impacted by how you said, you know, I, I start that out by asking questions, getting to know people, getting to know what they're um, what they're feeling, what their goals are, what's important to them. And it's really ba I mean, you probably learned that back in the MLM days because that's real basic kind of just networking stuff. But it's really I think people in the Internet world often forget that. Yeah, and I, and I feel a lot of people still think a lot of these things are scams. So if you're actually asking them, you know, hey, what, what caught your interest from my video? What are your goals are? What, what struggles are you going through right now? Then you can relate to them. You might have the same kind of experience from the past. It just makes it a whole lot easier to build that relationship with them. And everybody knows you help them get what they want. You'll get what you want. That's said for decades yeah it's like the most basic marketing right yeah who said that uh you know i think it was maybe jim Rohn or something you know if you want to get rich or something just help people get more of what they want um and and that's the simplest way to become wealthy or something something to that effect but um Man, cool. Wow, what a powerful nugget of of uh, marketing gold that that is. What a, tell us a little bit about um your day to day. So break down like a typical day of maybe content creation or um I I don't know if you said this earlier, are you still working in 9 to 5 and doing this on the side or how how um do you structure your time and content creation and stuff? Sure. Yeah, I still work, still work my nine to five. Um, I usually get up and I work out first thing in the morning. This is, this is my gym right behind me. Work out at home and then I do my nine to five. But I usually do all my content creation in the evening. So sometimes I'll put two videos in the evening, a couple hours apart. 
or sometimes I'll wake up first thing in the morning before my workout and throw a video on first thing in the morning. There's a lot of people that are getting up and they sit in bed for 30, 45 minutes and just sit there on social media all morning or they're already ready and they're sitting down having breakfast and coffee and they're searching on social media. So you got to be able to kind of get that to all those kind of people during those times. What, um, what, it, as you're creating content, uh, I'm curious, like, um, what, what's been, what's been the secret with you specifically, uh, you're on multiple different channels, but what's been the secret with Instagram? Because, you know, with 99,000 followers on Instagram, <laughs> Dude, that's a lot. Like, was there anything in particular you did that was different than maybe other what other people are doing? Or was there a moment that you were able to grow that super fast? Or did you use paid advertising? Or what did you have any like weird secret to Instagram that was that was big for you? Um, nothing real secret. I pretty much create the same video and put it on all platforms. And like I've heard from a lot of other people. You're going to get hot on one or two platforms. You might be dead on the rest. I, I would say I get less than 50 views on Facebook, less than 300 on TikTok and Instagram. Most of my videos have an average of 10,000 views. So it's it's just kind of the fuck of the draw. And one thing I did notice is on Instagram, you can actually share. So usually at the end of the video, I put like, follow, and share. So people will share that video to whoever else. TikTok has a save, so you can save it for later. So you'll want to put like, follow, and save for later to kind of get people to put that in there so they rewatch it at a later time. So I think that share really helps out. Um, several of my videos have over a 1,000 shares on them. So that's just extra free marketing for you that some random person just shared it with somebody else and that's just one extra person that could join your business and that you could you know, change their life with this business model that we do that's crazy that's crazy man i feel like uh yeah and what a what a helpful little nugget or tip to to everybody who's starting that is really true i do see that a lot where some people are um they're super viral on tiktok and their instagram's like every video's got like 50 <laughs> and it just seems like yours is kind of the opposite where your instagram is is just massive and blowing up that's really odd it is it is crazy how that happens but it's the it stresses the importance a lot of times people in our community are only on tiktok it stresses the importance to make sure you're on all of these different platforms because, man, you just never know which of these might go super viral and you might have just a massive, um, I, yeah, you just, you might have a really incredible growth spurt on one of these platforms and it could lead you to thousands and thousands of dollars of income just from one single platform, man. Super powerful. And it's just as simple as that. Creating that one video, editing it all. You do it in CapCut. You could do it in any of these. You could just do it in TikTok if you wanted and then download it and take it onto these platforms, change the music up, and you're off and running. Do you do a few videos each day? Yeah, I try and do two or three. Yeah. Sometimes I I wake up, I just have no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> but just you throw something together because you, you never know who it's going to impact. Um, I'd say one of my videos, I just, I didn't know what to do. I just sat down, recorded myself, just typed up something real quick, put it on there. And it has 300,000 views <laughs> and several hundred shares again on Instagram. Um, but once you, once you get that one video that goes viral, Everybody is watching that video plus the next two or three that you post and the next two or three that you post. And it just keeps going in a circle. I think my, I think that went on for about almost a month and a half. Wow. Every day where I'd have hundreds and hundreds of DMs for about a month and a half trying to keep up with all those. So you're not going to be able to reach everybody. 
but you can try to reach as many as you can. And one thing I did notice on Instagram is they only let you they only let you comment so many times and yeah. then you DM so many times. So after you've already done that, they blocked you for about twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I've been blocked several times, reaching yeah. out to so many people. So if you ever get to that point, it's good to maybe send ten to twenty DMs. For an hour and then wait a couple hours and then go back in and do another 10 to 20 so that yeah. you don't get blocked because being blocked for like 24 hours is not fun yeah yeah especially when a lot of your business depends on being able to create content <laughs> yeah. sit there and relate with people and you can't talk to them you can't really do anything yeah yeah so, totally <laughs> seen it a million times the um so do you ever go live on any of these platforms? Do you have any other, are you mostly just creating content? Uh, mostly just creating content. So from seeing up our, all the other interviews and live interviews, that's something here to do in the near future. Yeah. And, uh, I need to get on some of the other live people and see what they're actually doing. Yeah. Bingo. To follow exactly what they're doing. Um, I'd probably have a lot of huge anxiety just going on there right out the gate, trying to figure out what in the world I'm going to say. <laughs> right. I'm going to watch some of the other live people first and see how they're actually reacting with their, their people. Yeah, man. Wow. Another, another big gold bar of uh, wisdom there, you know, rather than feeling overwhelmed and sitting in inaction, what do you say? Well, I, I mean, lots of people are doing it. I'll probably just go and see what they do, take some notes, and then do it myself. Like, it's yeah. just, it's, there's so many examples and so many different, oh, just different avenues you could take it. I mean, I think about somebody like Calvin Hill, who for the last two years has just gone live and basically gave the same presentation every single week about crypto and, and, uh, about stocks and about uh, building an online business to fund that and all this different stuff and and um, and then there's different people like Amy or different it, just a lot of people out there who are who are doing that kind of thing and going live and and um, but yeah I mean do, I always just tell people just do what works like do what works try out little things like. You know, I'm going to try out going live and I'll give it a 30 day shot. I'll go live maybe once or twice a week. See if I like it. Also, see if it generates more sales. I think the big thing that it does, maybe sometimes even more than generating sales, is uh, it increases overall conversions. Like as in total, um, <clears throat> we call it, it's a, it's a figure we call lifetime value. So what we saw by going live five days a week with this show is um, it actually serves our community more than it does a cold audience. We don't actually get a lot of lead generation from this show. But what it does is it, it, um, it gives people additional touches, more touches, more live touches, because no one in our industry is doing this. No one. Uh, they might go live inside of a Facebook group to like four people or something, you know, as a, as a form of coaching and mentoring that you had to pay to get into it, but not in terms of just a free live show to share, you know, content creation strategies or how people are growing or what are they doing on Facebook or Instagram, right? Mostly we're just trying to expose people to, Hey, here's some people who are being successful. Go kind of investigate, see what they're doing, see what, you know, see what their strategies are. It's another, um, person you can go look at but yeah i just i think that um i don't know where i was going with that i just lost it but anyway i i i think that um a lot of times you know going live might not bring a ton more leads although i've seen that happen for sure i've seen people generate a ton more leads and sales from that i think the big benefit is that those leads and the traffic that you generate oftentimes will spend more money with you because they're now seeing you live. They've got additional help and support. They've got, you know, they're, they're able to see uh, you real in the flesh, you know, as a real human being. And they're like, Whoa, this is like, now it turns, it, it, it turns from content into community, which is now a totally different realm that they've entered. 
and it's a really powerful one, probably the most powerful when it comes to, yeah, that metric of lifetime value. So what comes up as I say that? Um, would you agree? Okay. Oh, yeah, I would agree with all that. And I would tell a lot of people that a lot of people didn't want to do videos and put themselves out there, but that's the first step. People want to see that you're a, a live person and you're not a, a robot. Um, I get a lot of people that want to actually call me, video call me on Instagram because they want to see that I'm the same person that they're seeing on the videos. So I've actually made a lot, made several friends. I got a couple of handful of people that I'm helping on a day to day. They reach out to me all the time now because we've had that video chat for five or ten minutes, and they can just see that I'm I'm real, just like them, just a normal, average, everyday person, and anybody can do this. Yeah, isn't that just? Oh man, that's. I I think in anything like in. Uh like in, in dog training or in weight loss or in virtually any niche, any industry, there's something uber powerful about discovering that the expert or the guru is just a normal freaking person. And it's like, are you serious? <laughs> this person is just like me. Like they struggle just like me. They're just, you know, like whatever they they've they've put on 15 pounds just like me and they they're struggling to get it off just like me you know that the words just like me are just really powerful and they're yeah man super super powerful so tom um i've got your tiktok and instagram handle up here make money with funk for everybody who's here go uh follow him and uh and, you know, uh, I don't want to say harass him, but, you know, tell him to tell him you want to see him go live. <laughs> I so. I don't know if you know this, but I've um, I've become a little bit of a bully and um, I've now been bullying people into going live uh, who haven't gone live before to test it out and try it out. Some people it's stuck. Some people it hasn't. But. And I've been seeing these people on TikTok as I've scrolled. I was like, oh, you're on the wake up show. And now here you are live hanging out. So um, it's a funny, but no, don't, don't go bully him, everybody, but uh, go follow him and make sure you, you let him know that you saw him on uh, wake up legendary Tom for everybody who's here. Um, you know, there's a lot of people here in the comments who are brand new. Like they, they just have, you know, it's day one or day two of the challenge. The idea of freelance digital marketing is new still, and um, it's an exciting time, but it's it can also be an overwhelming time. What would you say to these people who are just kind of getting going and they're maybe nervous or worried about starting TikTok or Instagram or something like that? And there's a little bit of nerves about hitting posts on that first video. What would you say to those people? Yeah, the, the big thing is just is just do it. Um, when you get in today, I think it was five, six, or seven, that really, really blows things up and lets you know that, man, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. It just gives you so many ideas of different directions you can go with this whole business model and training. Um, and like I said at the beginning, it really opened my eyes to all the different directions I could go and help not only myself, but my kids build something um, for my nine to five. My kids are not going to be able to ever take over my nine to five ever. And even if they did, they would start down at the bottom. So this is something that they can actually take over one day and build off of what I had, which is it's amazing, basically, for this business model. Um, I would tell you that when I got started in July, I was in a transition from moving from Delaware back to Colorado. So I'm trying to pack a house. I'm trying to sell a house. I'm trying to buy a new house. I'm trying to move my family across the country just after finishing the training. And then like, man, how am I going to create content through all this? But I did it. I just kept doing it. Even while we're driving, I would take videos of myself with driving in the car, driving down the road in different areas. And I would use those and make those every time we stopped for you know, for a restroom break or something, I would take 15, 20 minutes and put, to, put a video together and just throw it on there. You need to get down two or three videos a day, to stay consistent, do it every single day, no matter if you think it's great, if you think it sucks, if you think no one's going to look at it, just stay consistent and 
within that first month, you know, one by one, two by two, you'll get followers. You'll get people that actually reach out to you. And then you'll hit that one person that says, hey, you're just like me. What, what the heck are you doing? I need to do this. And then it'll just keep on going from there. The more, the more you just stay consistent, it's, it's going to happen one day. So just go by. If you build it, they will come. I love that. And I live by that too. Tom, thanks for uh, coming on the show. Uh, if you're open to it in a, uh, in a month or two, if you want to reach back out, we'd love to have you back on and just see what's new in your world and see, um, you know, what are, what are some new strategies that you've been learning? What's, what's fresh in your mind. And we'd love to just catch up and, and see you on the show again. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate that. And who knows, we might be live by that time. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now we're talking. Okay. Tom, thanks again. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. And um, yeah, we'll see you on next time. All right. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Uh, hey, his uh, handle is on TikTok and Instagram. It's make money with funk, F U N K. So uh, make money with funk. Uh, go find Tom. Go give him a follow. Say, hey, I, I saw you on Wake Up Legendary. Love what you're doing. Uh, let him know what was what was one or two things that were really impactful. Maybe share a couple of his videos. Just give him some love. And uh, I, I call this building yourself some good business karma. Um, you know, if you only go around to social media videos and uh, uh, you're, you're uh, reporting videos nonstop and blocking people and restricting and doing all of that. Chances are you might see that come back around too. Whether you believe in karma or not, I, I happen to believe a little bit in business karma um, just because I've seen it and experienced it. So go share, like, comment, and, um, you know, if you want to be a bully, you can, you can bully Tom into it. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a grown adult with kids. He can handle it. But you can bully him into going live. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what takes off and what does. I haven't seen a lot of people go live on Instagram, so we'll see – um, what that's like and, and maybe he'll report back to us in a month or two on how it's going. So, Hey, we'll be back here again, uh, the rest of the week. Um, I'm hosting uh, on behalf of Dave. He is, it's his birthday week. So, uh, if you can go post to Dave's social media or, uh, post in the group in the legendary marketer group, uh, and let Dave know happy birthday. I think his birthday is tomorrow. So, um, him and Aaron are doing fun things for his birthday week. Uh, and he'll be back, uh, hosting on Monday, I believe. So, uh, rest of the week, you got me and, uh, we'll welcome Dave back into the fold on Monday. Peace out, everybody. See you. Happy Wednesday.